What's up, Devils? j Dog back, 6 a.m., goddammit, with another fucking video. And today's video, we're going over the video posted three weeks ago, Behemoth Now, a commercial metal band that I don't care about. Goddamn, 2.4K views, fuck yeah. This one's a banger. I've already established, 2.4K views ain't jack fucking shit, but on J-Dog's piddly ass fucking channel, anything over 1,000 is kicking ass, so it's double kicking ass since it's at the 2,000s, right? 97 comments, didn't proofread shit, so we're going to raw dog it, goddammit. I just found which video is the next in line. That's it. Didn't read the comments. So, here the fuck we go. Yeah, here we go. Question mark on the very first goddamn comment. David Lane. Comments all the fucking time. j Dog <laughs> of Hell's Mania. I like it, goddammit. A query once more. Would you rather take a bubble bath with Shane Embry? <laughs> what the fuck? Why the fuck would I want to take a Shane Embry? That's homo as hell, brah, brah. Or be forced to listen to Nickelback on an endless loop. Whew. For 30 consecutive days. Oh, my goodness gracious. Who? I'd have to go with the uh, bubble bath, man. Because I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I'm not going to be getting any wood. I'm not a homophobe. So just making sure my dick ain't rubbing up against his. Hell, at least Shane fucking has some cool fucking napalm stories, right? I can get something good out of that. Nickelback, that would I just want to fucking slam my head into a goddamn car door. So I'm going with the Shane Embry bu bu bubble bath. As homo as that sounds. Chris Howard says, Evil Never Dies turns 20 next year. Fuck yeah, I never thought about it. Sounds about right. Yeah, was it, uh... No, it's got to be all in that, right? Was it, wait, did that, was 03? Uh, yeah, about 03, right? I was thinking that was 0102, but no, no, that wasn't 0102. Yeah, I guess 2003, right? Yes, I think I was 18 when I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Didn't even think about it. 20 years, goddamn. Fuck, time flies. Goat man, you weren't even alive, were you? <laughs> uh... Yeah, fuck. It's wrong goddamn button. Analyze. Analyze, analyze. Sub Jay Dizzle. Question What's your favorite metal band documentary? Mine is hands down Century of Torment about Cannibal Corpse. In my opinion, it's the greatest metal doc. Great direction tells a story. Shit, man. I, I yeah, probably that. That was a banger. Um I don't know too many metal documentaries, but yeah, probably that. But I can't, but I mean. Don't know a shitload either, but uh, a few I do, yeah. And that'd be kind of a hard to beat one. That, well, that, I did think that was really well done. I thought that was a damn good one. Anthony Capo de Lupa. Never seen you in the comments, Brah Brah. Shout out to you. What are your thoughts on Vomitory? One of my personal favorites that don't seem to get brought up as much. We're talking about Sweetest Death Mode. You got that right, Brah Brah. Super consistent band, and the drumming is, is insane. Would love to see Hells make some vomitory shirts, too. It's funny you say that. I actually, I've been thinking that for years. Uh, the first album, Raped in Their Own Blood, is definitely my favorite. Definitely love a t-shirt of that. That'd be a fucking banger. If Hells could, could do it, that'd be great. Uh, next in line would be Redemption. And then um, they don't have, uh, what's the 10-inch called, too? I own a 10-inch. Uh, what the fuck's it called? It's been a while since I listened to it. Uh, but anyways, those are the ones I know the best. The first two, and then I hope the time to listen to forever. And then they're they're a band. I don't know all the rest. This was the nauseous, whatever the hell it is. Um, but I've never heard a shitty album. And I kind of liked it because even like as early as what is raped in your own blood? Is that 92 or 94? I know it wasn't like super early 90s, like 90, and like with just members like that. But anyways, for being some sweet, it wasn't just like, oh, another band that sounds like from fucking Sweden. You know what I mean? That's why, for example, like you said, when people bring up the Swedish scene. Yeah, people don't bring up Bombator. Another band they don't bring up that I'm a big fan of is Deranged. And as, because it was like, this band's from fucking Sweden. It just sounds like it's real brutal shit. You know what I mean? Almost like you think it's from the US. And uh, it's, just, it's refreshing because, you know, everything that comes out of Sweden is kind of like, all right, even if I'm going to like this, I kind of already know what to expect. If it says it's from Sweden, that's death metal, but Vomitory and Deranged, uh, and there's others if I'm drawing a blank, uh, especially bands band from the 90s. I'm not talking about someone that started two years ago. Or even five years ago, or even ten years ago, but the nineties, goddamn it, was deranged and vomitory bullstar of the nineties. Uh, that it wasn't the, what you would think it would be. So uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, vomitory is great. Raped in their own blood is my favorite, and I would absolutely be fucking a sport in a t-shirt, whether Hell's did it or whether someone else did it. By the way, if you don't know vomitory too, I'm pretty sure we still have a bunch of CDs in stock because they got reissued. I think it was Killigan Records that did it. These nice slip cases too. The package is really nice. Uh, highly recommend it going to the Hell's Endings again. Because if you don't know fucking Vomitory and you're you're buying all these other fucking modern death metal goddamn bands, you're out of the loop and you're missing out, goddamn it. So get your fucking uh get your metal up, Rob Ross. So highly recommend them. Go over there. Hell's got you covered, goddamn it.
Nail Black Metal. This is a pretty fucking good one. A little bit of a book going on. At least a half a book. I'll read it off. I see a few question marks. And the first one's actually a pretty goddamn good one. You might know, why did Angel Corpse break up? Uh, I'll answer that first because... Uh, yeah, well, I'll just answer that first because there's a bunch of more in there. Uh, I don't know. The from what vibe I get is Pete and um, Gene don't like each other. Don't know why. Um, I'm 99% sure they don't like each other, but I don't know if that was why they initially broke up. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's why they're at least now broke up again. Um, what it's over, I have no fucking idea. Um, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. Uh, I love that band, goddammit. I agree. I totally agree. One, one of the absolute greats. I remember something about them getting in an accident on tour and Pete might have been injured. All that, I, that, I don't, all that I'm not, don't know about. Then then his girlfriend was stabbed on the same tour. What the, what the fuck? She, she must be out. I, I met, uh, I'm assuming it's his wife or his girlfriend. Um, I met her uh, with him at the uh, Hell's Head Bash, the second one. I think it was the second one, yeah. And talked to him for a little bit. There, it was before the show started, just like that, setting up the merch. Set. We're restock. It was on the Saturday, and we're restocking the uh, merch. And he, Pete just happened to be there, and he was with his, I got, like I said, wife or girlfriend, and uh, she seemed fine. So she was stabbed prior to that. She was alive and well, but uh, I don't know that fucking story at all. Uh, does this? Does that sound right? <laughs> News to me, bra bra. But again, a lot of shit, man. Especially with the scuttlebutt and drama in the goddamn scene, and just just life in general, man. I'm the most out of the loop motherfucker you'll ever meet. So, not the best person as far as what comes to that shit. Uh, yeah, where the fuck did they leave off? I didn't know if that was the true reason or if something else happened. If that is the reason, that's one hell of a story. Anyway, I regret not coming to Hell's Head Bash and checking them out. Yeah, you, yeah, that was one of the bands I did watch. I didn't get to watch every band because I was tied down to a goddamn merch stand. But I specifically said, I think it was Reaper. And I was like, hey, dude, I'm watching Ano Corpse. So, like it, love it, hate it. You're watching Stand on Your Own. But then I think... Uh, the uh, Daniels were helping us too at, the, at that one. Pretty sure that was the one. God fucking damn it! I keep clicking off this goddamn thing. Well, here we are. There we are. Mm, where the fuck did I leave? Uh, uh, the shows I saw them pl play back in the day were amazing. Been thinking about them a lot lately. I have a show of their videos from the Malai Sheep Flying Machine. Oh, bro, that was the fucking uh, that was the show I was at. Me, Eric, and Chase, maybe front and center. So if you see fucking three knuckleheads up front taking photos. It was that was that the one with Satyricon and um I get it mixed up. Was that Satyricon and Christian? Angel Corpse, Satyricon, Christian? I think that's the one what it was. Or was it Angel Corpse, Satyricon, and I think it was Angel Corpse, Satyricon, Christian. But whatever. I definitely saw all three of those bands there, but I'm pretty sure I was the same tour. 2000, I think it was. An Exor An Exor Bowl was the new album. Yeah, 2000 or 2001. But that was at the Flying Machine, Lorraine O'Hell. That's when I first saw them. And so then they broke up, and then I saw them, yeah, just one hour time at our, at our fest. That was it. Those were the two times I saw them. That was a great show. And uh, I met them very, very briefly at that. Went up to them. There's no way they remember. I would guess if it was 2000, I would have been 15. If it was 2001, I would have been 16. But uh, it's funny. If you have a VHS, I guarantee you, Mir and Chase are fucking right up front. Because we actually took photos and had photos of that uh, show. Yeah, damn question. Uh, questions here, but nothing really I have anything to say about, to be honest with you. <laughs> here's a uh, here's a decent one. It's kind of an obvious one, but I'll I'll answer it. The Lurking Fear. Sup, J Dog. What is your opinion on Corpse Grunge's original band, Monstrosity? <laughs> My opinion is if you don't like the first two Monstrosity albums, what the fuck are you doing in Death Metal? <laughs> Those are masterpieces. I think Imperial Doom is one of the best death metal albums of all time. Yeah. I I, I just think that's just common knowledge. <laughs> you don't know that. What the fuck? Uh, he ended up being a great fit for Cannibal Corpse, but in my opinion, nothing he ever does will come close to his performance on Imperial Doom. Oh, really? That's your favorite thing? That's cool. He was truly in his prime. Yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking awesome. I mean, um, Millennium's fucking great, too. It's not as good as Imperial Doom. Actually, somebody asked me in a uh, prior uh, video. Not, not actually. I, th I think I just that, that's my answer. This is my answer. Uh, they asked me, "What's your uh, most hated album cover of albums that you love?" Millennium. That cover is fucking terrible. I thought of that. I'm thinking now. Um, that's my only complaint about the album. Cover art fucking sucks shit. 
uh, for the Millennium. And then, but, but when George left, I like pretty much everything by Monstrosity. Some of the later ones I don't know as well. I definitely own uh, some of the later ones. The last one they just did, I remember picking up an LP of that. Everything's pretty good. Rise to Power and all that shit. It's all good. Don't know it as well. But the first three I love, In Dark Purity is their third album. <clears throat> That's the tour I saw them on. I never got to see them with George singing. I wish I did. Uh, just before my time, I was too young. But in Dark Purity, I think that was in '99, and that's where I met like Lee Harrison and shit, and had him sign my my um. Actually, I'll fucking show. Just no, I ain't talking shit or making shit up. No poser crap over here. God damn it. So it was 2001. I saw him to put the year. I had um Lee Harrison. I think he was the only original member at the time, or he was just the only guy I met. I remember meeting Lee. I had him sign my Imperial Doom, and then when I met Corpse Grinder, as you can see, I brought it, and I had Corpse Grinder sign it when I first met Campbell. In gold ink. Lee. Corpse Grinder. And, uh, no, you know what? This was 99. I don't know what, uh, I think I might have had, uh, Somebody on this one sign that did it. Jason, there's, there's a Jason on here. Global, maybe. That look it. Anyways, Lee Harrison's. I don't know why the fuck I had him sign it twice. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't know. Maybe I met him. But I definitely met him 99 because he wrote 99 on this. I don't know why the fuck I had him sign it twice. He wrote Lee Harrison 99. Uh, maybe I didn't really. Sometimes when you do all the shit and you're talking, like, I'm getting my shit signed. Erica Chase had the same albums getting it signed, and you were kind of like handing back and forth. You had a pens. Maybe I thought he missed it, and he signed it. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, like I said, I don't know why the fuck else I had him sign it twice. And then I brought my. I think I might have bought in Dark Purity at the show. I can't remember. No, you know what? I think I maybe mean, I didn't think I. I don't know what the fuck my mind says. Maybe I had him sign the front in gold ink because I had Corpse Grinder sign. I was like, maybe get his signature next to his. Who the fuck knows? Because on this one. Lee Harrison, 99. That's when I first would have saw them. And then on this one is 2001 Lee Harrison. So that would have been the second time I saw him. But this album, yeah, this is the first one without George singing. If you don't know this album too, again, this this, this album smokes everything on the Magnet Stomp catalog. Again, I'm not talking shit on Magnet Stomp. I definitely like some of his bands too. But I'm sorry, this is a fucking masterpiece. Smokes a lot on Hell's Headbangers too, so I'm not talking shit. i just tell you how the fuck it is. That's a fucking... Metal goddamn masterpiece that I'm just giving a uh, recommendation to devils that if you don't have it, you need to fucking get it. That's like a mandatory death metal album, my book. Where the fuck the hell you all? Next goddamn question in line. Give you a little bit of show and tell there for you, devils. Girl Stern, yo, J Dog, any chance you could show us your turntable setup? Probably not. I mean, it's downstairs and it's nothing, <laughs> it's, it's nothing exciting by any fucking means. It's a goddamn turntable hooked up to a receiver. Um, like, literally, just, to, you know, off to the side, a turntable here, I have a single disc uh, CD player here, then off to, over to the side, there's a, a receiver, and it's all hooked up to speakers. So, I mean, it's really nothing. It'd be kind of like, ah, oh, here you go. Like, there's really nothing, you know, it's, it's nothing fancy. So, but it does the job. Also, do you have any Hellhammer bootlegs picture this you're proud to own thanks for i'll give you another show show and tell time god damn it i sure motherfucking do as a matter of fact it's a bootleg cd and one of my favorite bootleg cds of all time might be my favorite bootleg cd this right here for you devils if you don't have this you need it this is by far the best hellhammer release period it's better than the Demon in Trails release and shit like this. Uh, you know, the Demon in Trails where it's all the demos and shit like that. This is the Hellhammer double disc where it has all the demos and shit. If you're so well, I'm just going to show you the car first. Big, thick, 20-page booklet. And yes, it's a bootleg, but the bootleg's be better than the official because I may or may not know who put this out. No names mentioned, but by an actual fucking fan. I know it wasn't fucking Hell's Headbangers for any ass clowns that like to make smart ass shit fucking comments like that. They actually they did at the time that this came out too. No, it was not Hell's Headbangers. Although Hell's Headbangers did get these in. And this is like shit 15 years ago or so, at least. I mean, so cool shit. But it was put out by an actual fan as opposed to Demon Entrails, which I do own an LP and a picture disc of that, which is pretty nice. Put out by a bunch of fucking posers over at Central Media. I think it was Central Media that did it right. We all know it's just a bunch of posers over there. 
So, of course, the bootleg's better. Put out by a real goddamn fan. It's a double disc. I mean, this is fucking awesome. It sounds great, too. Literally, anytime I listen to Hellhammer, anytime and every time, this is what I listen to. This is literally all I listen to. A Hellhammer. When it's Hellhammer time, this goes in the motherfucking player. This is probably... Well, maybe in the death demo CDs, too. As far as bootleg CDs... Carcass demo bootleg CD too. Yeah, but as far as bootleg CDs, because I, I remember somebody asked me once, can you show your bootleg CDs? Well, there's one. Those, those are probably my all-time favorites. Uh, if you don't know that, that's long out of print. Like I said, that came out. I remember when that came out, and Hell's got a bunch of them in. That's where I got my copy. But as it has to be at least 15 years ago. So it's long out of print. So the only way you're getting that is eBay or Discogs. But I highly Highly recommend it. If I was to only own one thing by Hellhammer, if I had to get rid of everything else, that's literally what I would keep. Uh, Anthony Neal. Hi, J-Dog. Morning. What do you think about the Black Dahlia murder, and do you like their music? He's bringing up the guy died or whatever, which I did hear about. Uh, I'm not familiar with them, and I always assume that they're one of those kind of shit Deathcore fucking uh, new metal bands. Well, from what I've heard, it was Tommy Redefining Darkness. I think he played it for Reaper. I don't think he officially even heard it, but he played it for Reaper. And Craig's like, "Oh, it's actually not that bad." It's like he's like he's like I don't he's like, I don't think you would like it. Like talking to me, he's like, "But I guarantee you wouldn't think it's you would think it's way better than expected." He's like it's kind of like melodic metal. I think that's what he said. Um, so they kind of got a little bit more bonus points. Oh, okay, so maybe they're not a complete shit, but obviously they they became very um, popular. So uh, accepted by a lot of the canoes and the people that do like the uh, new metal, death core, and all that bullshit that I, that, that I can't stand personally. Um, so they, they entered that that fan base, so they probably rub off. And uh, they kind of earned some like, point, like kind of like a, a little bit of a pass to where I could get on pass two. Is like when I met one of my, I don't want to call them idols or mentors, or just somebody I looked up for in information in the bodybuilding world uh, over at Enhanced Athletes, the uh, guy, Coach Trevor. Very, very smart guy. I've learned a lot from him. And when I met him, Hung out with him and picked his brain. I was wearing this member shirt. He's like, holy fuck, man, cool ass fucking shirt. And uh, he had a Black Dahlia murder tattoo. He showed me that. So, uh, cause he likes, you know, metal or at least more popular metal shit. But I mean, he knew this member was. So, uh, but we didn't talk about, we actually, we didn't talk about music at all. Other than him making that comment, I just picked his brain about some shit. Uh, so, the fact that he was a fan now has always been a fan of uh, Trevor. Uh, <laughs> they kind of get a little bit of a pass. <laughs> Maybe that's unfair, but hey, fuck it. Life's unfair, goddammit. And as far as the guy dying, passing away, killing himself or whatever, I heard it through the grapevine just what, it is not long ago, what, two, three weeks ago. Uh, I, I I didn't really care. I mean, there's it, not no disrespect to defense because I don't know the guy. I don't know the guy's name. Uh, I never heard his band. So it was kind of like a total stranger. Hey, uh, J-Dog, this total stranger that you never met, never heard of, don't know anything about, uh, kill himself. It's kind of like, oh, okay. You know, that, so that's pretty much my take on it. Uh oh, guys, he's got a novel. Uh, is it a novel? I don't even see any question marks in there. So, I think this is the last goddamn question, and I'll. It could be a really good one, but I'll I'll, I'll read it off. Kind of answered it in a sense, but we'll see how much I remember because a video that I did specifically on this topic. Metal Musician 6996, which comments on everything, so maybe I didn't. Uh, j Dog got a question about Hell's Headbanger starting. Did you or any of your older brothers study any business classes in college or buy any books about business? Or did you guys all kind of just go with the flow when it came to Hell's Headbangers? <clears throat> so there's that video uh, for you devils that haven't um, seen it. Some of the newer guys say the people all the time, like, hey, just found your channel, shit like that. And I'm, I'm watching your videos and going the back catalog. Uh, so, yeah, that's awesome. Go to the back catalog, and I definitely did do a video how hell, how hell, hell's 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 can't even fucking talk. How hell's headbangers got started, and I, it's been, I don't think I talked about it. yeah. This part is uh, no, none of us went to a uh, business school at all. Chase is the only one that actually went to college, kind of like that. In my opinion, half-ass college, where it's it called I believe it was Tri C he went to, where it's kind of like you're done in two three years, but for like just I don't even know what the fuck he took up. To be honest with you, um, he he told me at one point, but I don't remember. It's just nothing interesting. That's for sure. Just regular shit that people go in and they work a cubicle nine to five, right? He only did the job for like a year or so before he quit and would do hells full time. But yeah, none of us took up business school and shit like that. Because I was kind of like, 
it, it it's more complicated than this because obviously you have business expenses just like that. But when you're starting up and putting on a CD, you're like, okay, like let's say you're even paying a band or whatever, like to do a CD, it's roughly a thousand dollars for a thousand CDs. That's one dollar a disc. And let's say you 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 deal with a band who's not big kahunas and they're just like, let's just use simple numbers. Let's say they don't even want copies. Like just give me a thousand dollars to do it for to, to to do it officially. You know what I mean? That you own the rights to do that. Okay, so now you're up to two thousand dollars. Well, that's two dollars. You sell them for ten. That's eight dollars profit. To me, it's like, uh, okay. Well, when you sell all eight, when you sell all thousand, you made eight thousand dollars. Now, granted, you got to sell all thousand. Be like, oh man, this guy imploded. Look how my titles are putting out. It's like, oh yeah. Sometimes you don't sell all fucking thousand, or it takes years to do it. So it's not as just as easy as sounds. Just kick back and let the fucking checks come in. It's not as simple as that. If it was that easy, everybody would be doing it, right? And then obviously, then you got you, you got to buy. Uh, mailers and then when you get employees and then when you have a warehouse like this is that then there's, there's there's all kinds of expenses right so shit does add up i, I get it there's, there's that and then, then you're paying taxes so that but the simple as far how we started kind of like you said went with the flow because literally that's kind of pretty sure i can chase looked at it the same way or very very similarly was just kind of like that and when we're wholesaling shit okay well we got this wholesale at eight dollars like we bought like whatever um from nuclear blast or um um, who the fuck else we wholesale from back in the Cyclone Empire was a place we wholesale from all the time uh, in the early days. Uh, I forget who else I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, so it's kind of like, okay, you got the LPs for $11 and we're selling them for, let's say, $20. That's you made $9. I mean, got a CD for eight because the wholesale price was eight. We sold them for 12 or 13. You made four or five bucks. I mean, it's just kind of, you know what I mean? Kind of, in my sense, in our minds, at least mine, it's like, it's just, Common sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? About went with the flow with that. And then as you get bigger or whatever, because at that time we're just doing it as a hobby, literally just for fun, um, more BS comes along. You, know, well, you got to hire employees and then now you're a registered business and you're paying fucking taxes. Then, oh, well, fuck, we, we have, we're out of room. We can't be doing this out of mom and dad's house. <clears throat> Bought a house together, just me and Erica Chase. We lived out of it, ran it out of there. So it was kind of like an expense, but not an expense because we were living there as well. But then when it got to the point, okay, we can't even do this out of house no more. Now we got to go warehouse. So now we got a monthly rent. And then, um, you know, all, it's all the BS. So it just, it just compiles as you get bigger, but it's, it's like anything. You know what I mean? You just, I mean, you just go with it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, kind of go with the flow, but just kind of, you know, some of it is just, it's just common sense. It's not that fucking hard, you know, but it gets complicated as you get bigger and you just, you just learn as you go. That's how we did it. You know, we're not the smartest guys around by any means. None of us know NASA engineers or anything like that. So, um, yeah, that's it for this one, Devils. You know what to do. Comments, questions, concerns, anything the fuck you got about anything, ask fucking anything. It doesn't get back to be bands about shit. You know, you ask a question about a fucking uh, Hell's Head Bangers and whatever the fuck it was started or business school or whatever. Questions like that. They're kind of sometimes fun to ask and refreshing. So, what the fuck you got about anything? Leave it in the goddamn, you know, comments and I'll get them answered. As always, see you tomorrow. God damn it. Later.